Hello everybody, welcome back inside Key Arena. We are ready to go live with our final knockout game. It's Navi versus Team Liquid. I got Winter, Merlini, and Waga back by my side. Panel felt like Navi could be that kind of crafty team that could sneak out a best of one. But we know better of Liquid. Winner, what do you think? Liquid's turn Liquid's to definitely the favorite to come on Dakota. Right. But I believe in Navi. You believe in Navi? Gentlemen over here, what do you think? I know we already have a draft, so we'll hop into it in a second, but early impressions? <laughs> Navi have a lot of cheese threats. They do, and I think like we're a little bit stronger though, but I love Navi as well. I'm like Shiver, yo. Navi's <laughs> fair enough. Yeah, to Navi's here. Yeah, yep. fair enough. Reporting you, sorry. No. Liquid's turn to we'll have pick. to see if the heart's going to be good enough for this team. We hop into the draft now. Navi, they pick up the Oracle and the Nature's Prophet for their second pick. Liquid snag up Shadow Demon and Axe. First gentlemen, this comes out a plethora of bans. Nothing too crazy, though. Yeah, the IO Sanking is definitely bans that you want to use against Navi. Like, those are the two, like, I would say best heroes that allow them to play their game, you know, the way they want to execute their early game plan. And I, I like the Prophet pickup as well. They are the two teams in the group Reserve stages that time. use the hero, DC and uh, Furion. Basically, like, early game, the support roams around, you're very aggressive, but there's always a plus one. So you, you can always kill a hero and take a tower. That allows them to make the game fast, transition into their tempo, and it's very dangerous when you make a mistake against their lineup. We talk about Navi and in fast tempo, and I'm seeing Liquid get an axe here. Is there any sort of conflict there, Waga, that you would say? Do you think we're already building together a lineup that can deal with fast pace? I think what Liquid have built with the ST and Axe already is that they force out the Fury, and there's not many offlaners that safely lane. And General is a very important player on Navi. If he doesn't have uh, that momentum in the early game, he, he really is what Navi play around. So I beg to differ. I they they can it. use the Furin, but I think when he plays Beastmaster or Slardar or Axe himself, I actually think Navi play better. They go with Bat a lot though for general. I think it's actually Bat. strange that they phase Nature's Prophet. They go for like Navi's Bad DS. Turn to pick. Doesn't Dityra yeah. also play Nature's Prophet in the safe? Yes. Level? He used yeah. to play it pretty often back, back, while back. I'm talking yeah. like Starlight. not the recent games though. Yeah. yeah. But maybe it's time. Oh. Best of one. Let's throw it back a couple of pages if we're Navi and even pull out the Queen of Pain for a third pick because, because why so, not? So fast paced. Like Queen of Pain in the early, in the laning phase, it's easy for you to keep the, the opponent mid laner always at like half HP. And a Furion rotation can always uh, get you a kill. So they're going to look to put a lot Ten of pressure in the mid lane for Liquid. Is this a Huskar game? They have they have second Five. pick coming oh. out of the second phase. Oh. They have next band coming up. They have an Oracle. Yeah, Oracle is fantastic against Axe as well. Reserve oh no, the Liquid... Not ban that and forget. That's definitely very likely, but I also think it's Team Liquid puck time. Fada plays an amazing puck, and this is a good game if ever. There's no silence, there's no stun on the side of Navi. You can be ultra aggressive with this. Yeah, but then if they, the if they go with puck, it will give Navi more incentive for the Huskar, because puck is all spell damage. They have to decide this pick very carefully. If they have a draft that over be over reliant on one source of damage, that could be very very difficult for them. To actually, pick Huska. I actually think it's very dangerous to pick Huska into Axe. All that pure damage, it actually. Yeah, but they have Oracle you. though. I think no, Oracle is fantastic Simon. against Axe because you stop all the damage from happening. Ooh. Okay. So Naga going to be coming Liquid's out here from Liquid and Navi. Back. They're continuing their fast-paced draft here. They hesitate yeah. not one bit to get the Enchantress. This is just just what Navi wants in all their games. They're going to execute. The same sort of strategy, maybe with a little different heroes. They always have a jungling hero, and this game Enchantress, you have more incentive to pick Enchantress against Ten Naga, which is more remaining. most likely going to be a core Naga. You steal the illusions. Five the Navi lineup remaining. we're seeing here thrown together, just at least to me personally, feels like Navi of like a month, two months ago, than Navi we yeah. saw in the group stage. They're just going to look to pressure the, the safe lane with the Prophet and Enchantress, with the Navi's creeps coming to your to lane back. and overpowering your supports, and they're going to try to take your tower pre-five minutes. If that happens for them, it's going to allow Navi to like snowball and get off rolling very quickly, because Liquid wants to play a slower paced game right now. We get rid of the Huskar, so gentlemen, we don't have to worry about that. So no, Liquid Ten doesn't have to worry about remaining. that. We don't have to worry about that, Dakota. <laughs> we have yet to see the Huskar debut on the main five stage, though. Remaining. You're no. you're disgusting, you know. I'm not. I don't play the hero. <laughs> <laughs> you play a spirit. Oh, I actually think this was a really good band by Navi. I think Liquid really wanted that timber saw. This is such a perfect Faceless game again. Void. It goes back to the same thing. No silence, no stun. Yep. They picked Void, so that's yep. the only disable. They needed so, burst damage with the axe, and they needed deep push if they wanted to run Naga as a core. Yep. So that would have been perfect for them. SD and timber saw also would have been insane. What do you think they go back for now? Merlini, what do you believe? I don't back think of that many mid laners that can salvage this. It's, yeah. almost, it's almost always a Matumba man. Oh. oh, Death Prophet though. All right, gentlemen, real fast. What do you think? Liquid lineup is too slow. And yeah, uh, gonna take I, I'm agreeing with Mr. Banwood here. Navi's too fast? Yeah. Waga? Fast. 
Yeah, Navi has a really fast-paced lineup, but I still favor Liquid. We got two of the most popular teams in Dota right okay, now. Shiver. And one of them, yeah, nice. One of them is going to have to go. We're going to see which team that's going to be. Let's throw it over to our casters for the last game of day number one for TI6. It's Capitalist and Blitz. Take it away, gentlemen. Earlier today, we had to say goodbye to a legend here at TI6. Puppy got knocked out of the tournament, and now we're going to potentially say, well, we have to say goodbye to one of his former teammates. Will be Dendi representing the heart of Navi or Kuro leading Team Ten Liquid through remaining. a pretty successful year so far, but now in a turn of events left in a Five best of one remaining. elimination against his former teammate Blitz. This is probably the most intense of the best of ones today, and it's the very last one. You see the drafts. You were talking about a little bit of tempo for, for Radiant Side Liquid choosing the last pick up the Death Prophet. Navi, meanwhile, pretty fast-paced with that mid Queen of Pain. Yeah, they don't have the best ways, I think, to deal with this Naga Cyber when it comes to the ultra late game, just because if you're Navi, you want to constantly apply pressure. You don't want to deal with those Naga illusions. So for Navi, I think the game plan is very clear. Put as much pressure as you possibly can, whereas Liquid, it's buy time for this Naga Siren. Allow her to develop her own game. Man, I still can't believe that this is going to be the last game for one of these two teams. So in that case, it feels rather fitting that we are going to go back and put this game. A large amount of the tempo is going to be determined by Art Style's classic jungling with the Enchantress and mid Dendi Queen of Pain, right? You said you've got to put up the pressure fast, and those are going to be the two heroes that cement a lead early on in the laning phase, at least. Yeah, exactly. And I think for Na'Vi, just harass this mid lane as much as he possibly can, slow down Fata's farm, and they're even going to spot General in this Roche pit, force him to get a time walk out. Waste some of his mana, but it's going to affect too much. Now, what about the safe lane Fury? And obviously, that's going to be yet another uh, example of Navi really trying to push the pace of this game. Uh, running a safe lane hero that can actually is. teleport anywhere in the map and instantly be able to provide a numbers advantage. Um, but what is the difference here, in your mind, of running that Furion top and having General play the Faceless Void as an offlaner here rather than vice versa? Because now, for Navi, you can... Uh, scale your cores very greedily into the into the mid game and early game and I, I think they've read the fact that mind control is going to go for this iron talent axe jungle and so in this way they can potentially just straight up win three lanes you see Seneco camping this uh, mid lane for Dendi and yeah, this is going to be pretty hard for Liquid to contest just because mind control does not have the build to go to the stop lane Bada going to be left in a one versus two scenario Kuro can't really help him out too much against this rather aggressive mid situation as you said the top lane being completely abandoned by team liquid so ditchy Ra is going to have total free farm here and may be able to have an impact on that mid lane when he's able to pick up his level two at any moment's notice there's a moment of weakness there on fauna he'll tp in and provide a helping hand to navi and then our bottom lane general is probably going to be doing all right. He's facing up against a Naga Siren and a Shadow Demon. I can't imagine that is a dual lane that will put too much pressure on him. Yeah, Jerex has gone for the poison level one, kind of harass and trade hits, but General not going to be too worried about this. And this has kind of been Liquid's case throughout this tournament, just weak laning phases, which eventually lead to a snowballing mid game for the enemy team. We're already starting to see that here is Jerex going to get eaten down and General a lot of stacks of poison on him, but on the left side, here comes Art Style trying to get that first blood. He's going to be able to try and go straight for Jerex. He's got the ensnare ready to go. He will be able to lock down Jerex. Let's see if they can actually finish him off. The disruption comes out from Jerex. Art Style dropping lower and lower. Trying to go for the neutral tonight. Not good enough. And neutrals instead will deny Art Style. That was the best possible scenario for Navi as Art Style low anyways. Very fortunately just manages to die there. Yeah, beautiful. Pick up the first blood art style already having a huge impact on that jungling enchantress and is going to keep up the pressure near this bottom lane, teeping down and wants to be able to pick up uh, perhaps a wild wing ripper that he spotted out earlier. In this mid lane Fata just continues to take a beating. Dendi still has the blink ready to go, but is only level two, no levels of scream of pain just yet. He's gotta be careful just because there is a fairy fire available. Anfada, who desperately wants to not have to send more regen to himself, play for that bottle, but that might just cost him his life, as he is starting to get really low here. And Navi, they are liable to just go for this dive, especially with this DP available from this Nature's Prophet. Nai coming out. 
really keeping that bottle outside of Fada's reach. In fact, he's going to come over and steal some of Mind Control's farm just so he can get that assured bottle without putting himself in too much danger. But still, it seems like, uh, as you kind of set it up, pre-laning phase, Na'Vi are actually going to be winning every single one of their lanes. Kuro, just, too. Yeah, he kind of seems left without a, a much of a job here on this bounty hunter. Yeah, if you're can't Kuro, really put much pressure anymore. you want to go bottom, you want to follow around this enchantress, or you want to harass mid and try to make the lanes okay, but it's still a free lane at top, and it looks so attractive as Navi getting aggressive on Matumba Man, and they are slowing down his farm so much right now in this game. So the early level 6 on the bounty hunter may be able to offset things in time to come, but that's only if Liquid can actually win some fights, and with the way the rest of the lanes are going, seems doubtful they will have much strength to go on so far this is all navi so, although we haven't seen the first fight or anything like that navi's got a pretty greedy course they've got the supports that back themselves up and art style he's going to continue to try to make moves around the map as Soneko grabs this bounty rune now one of the big silver linings here between the bounty hunter picking up a, a relatively early level six it seems with him taken up a free lane at top and then also we have this mind control free farming away on the x this is probably one of the faster junglers that you'll see he's already level five by four minutes in he could have a very large impact but that's only going to usually come with the blink dagger and that may be too late to stop navi snowball mind gonna make his rotation up at top and dr rob might not know about this as they're trying to find the angle right now to collapse on him instantly he does have the level of Sprout and the TP available. It's going to be slow down. Needs to be able to find the space to be able to get a Sprout TP away. But Mind Control closing the gap. Oh, nice that's Rian with the Rian doing so much. Kuro's now going to try and do the same. But Mind Control still can't get there. And now a beautiful setup by Seneko. Manages to get the fortunes end onto Ditchia Raw. Purging him off as well as hitting both Kuro and Mind Control. That was so well done by Ditchia Raw. Just sending his hero back. Microing that Treant. Definitely kept him alive as... They definitely had enough damage to kill him. That level 1 Shuriken Toss doing quite a lot of damage, even level 2 right now. Gonna make his way back up top. They are robbing maybe a little bit too cocky as Seneko has left this lane. The Sentry Ward is gonna spot him out. It'd be too late, he's already slowed down. He's got the phase boots. Might be able to stay ahead of Mind Control. Gets the Sprout, but the call is there. They finish him off. Liquid evening out the score, but Dendi here with some vengeance. Has the double damage rune. Does not want to blink forward into this. Mind Control. He's got a blink. Kuro actually takes a large amount of damage. Has an if is ready to go. Dendi is gonna no go for a scream again. He's gonna get it. He's gonna go oh, for it. This Dendi reads it perfectly against Kuro. That's a huge kill. That was a decently leveled bounty hunter who was almost level five. At the same time, though, no reason for Dendi to have to die in that top lane. Art style. Taking a look at him, you know he's going to make a, a big movement rather soon here as he's deep inside the Radiant Jungle. Going to put this Hellbear Smasher to good use, but is it going to be mid or is he going to invade the Radiant Jungle further? Looks like he's looking towards mid. Kuro making the TP in though, refreshes the bottle of Fada and they'll look for the six minute rune as well. So this Oh, that was an aggressive blink from Dendi and they're going to find a haste rune too. No, this goes from bad to worse, Dendi! That blink four thought the six minute rune would be all his, but he gets punished immediately by a turn of fates. The haste room picked up by Fada. He'll now rotate to mid. Put some pressure on Seneko. Is Seneko too far out? He should just be able to purge this one off. But the haste room isn't that much of a threat. Pretty massive of Dendi to throw away that lead that was built up for him as out of this axe is catching up in net worth. Good news for Navi though is that this bottom lane is still gone relatively unopposed for General who picks up a very early level 6, hasn't had to resort to jungling like Mind Control did in the beginning of the laning phase. Art style, the priest of the jungle keeps the fade, stakes around that middle lane, finds his opening, rotating behind Fada, picks up the kill with the help of Dendi's TPN. Now the smoke up immediately, Navi, all out aggression here. They're gonna try and push the speed game, catch Liquid off guard by rotating up to the top lane. Yeah, Mind Control might not see this coming, just saw Navi in this mid lane, and Kuro might actually spot this Radiance out. This would be the best possible scenario for Liquid. They might not get either of them as they do, they do have the dust available. They're going to TP behind him. And got him. They managed to get the dust up. The Sprout surrounds him, and Seneca with the extra nukes. He is a level 5 Oracle at Purifying Flames. Hurts quite a bit for some of these squishier supports. As you said earlier, the Bounty Hunter in the levels is actually kind of turning against Liquid because Kuro's been picked off so many times it just means extra levels for Na'Vi now. In terms of experience, they're doing just fine. Both their supports doing okay as Artstyle, who's been so active around the map. 
Already almost level 5. Jarex, he's gonna run into art style here. He doesn't have mana available, and it looks like they want to try to make a move. They should be able to surround him without a problem. General does have the Chronosphere. He's low! Oh, he found it! What a perfect Chronosphere! Hitting 3! They're gonna go for the kill on Jarex. Will be able to claim that one, and art style still gets away. What an initiation from General. And now Kuro may still be picked off. Goes Got the in Sonic Wave. Screen. Sonic Wave goes out. Dendi, he actually managed to pick up the screen. He has an Arcane Room. He has another Scream of Pain. Makes the guess. This time around, he will not be able to find Kuro, but it looks like Kuro's still dead. It's the Shadow Strike, last tick. Wait, 5 HP. Kuro, Kuro was really, he had a 12 charge wand. He's like, he just did not want to use. I'm good. Died. Can't believe that he even went for that. He's playing with fire right there. Spada picks up some farm in the meanwhile. Soneko makes his move forward, but without a Sonic Wave available from Dendi, this is an empty threat. First exorcism from Fada. Not really doing too much there, so we're gonna go back and see that Chronosphere from General. I thought for sure they were just gonna surround Art Style, but he managed to get a small gap there to get himself away from Liquid, and then the Chronosphere is angled perfectly, hitting those three heroes and giving Art Style free escape. The biggest thing is that the Bounty Hunter was way too far out. He did have the Shuriken Toss available to him, but just didn't have the range. I mean, it just enough for the Enchantress to get out. General with a very good Chronosphere, especially in a 1v3 lane. They're going to be happy with that. Mind Control though, picking up a lot of farm in this top lane. Navi, they're afraid to send anybody up here. Is Kuro now going to get spotted by that scan? It means that Jira will just play it safe. Sticking near that tier 1 tower, knowing that the Bounty Hunter is here. They could actually gotten the pick off for mind control if they could have successfully ganked the Furion that would have sped up that blink dagger timing he's so close to it sitting at 1750 but that is unlikely to be the case here so oh, very decent lead right now for Navi and kills two to five and they built up a 1k gold lead and XP not too much to go off of at 10 minutes into the game but they have picked 3d tricor and now they're gonna make their move bottom Mind Control gonna walk past this ward. And Sonic right over the 10 minute rune. Fada, he's gonna try and contest. Dendi makes sure he actually has the double silence. Now the Spirit Siphon on Sinenko purges himself off. That's not gonna stop it. They get the disruption and will catch up to him. Ending that kill. Further rotations out from Liquid. They really wanted to ensure this 10 minute rune went the way of Fana. I think they spotted that Navi would try and get greedy and go for that. They only get the kill on the support. Meanwhile, Navi do claim the tier one tower at the bottom lane. So Navi still potentially getting the better of these trades. Yeah, unfortunately for Navi, there was no track on that kill, so Kuro didn't even pick up any extra farm for himself. Vanguard completed on mind control, and it does look like DR Ra. He's saving up a lot of money. Decided to go for old school, Shadow Blade. 2,500 gold. Oh no, he's oh. gonna go for the Maelstrom. And that's gonna be a lot of damage on him. Find with this Faceless Void. Goes for the early Vlads. Actually got a pretty heavy amount of physical damage for this lineup. Kuro is going to pop the smoke here on both. Zaneko holding onto the dust. It might be too late. They spot out Kuro. Kuro is going to be caught now by Tendi. They know it too. He just gets out the track. Tries to throw, lay out some damage with the Shuriken. His life is claimed. He runs into the smoke though. That was aimed towards ganking up mind control. Saving his life may actually be worth the death of Kuro there. Yeah, you're okay when one of your supports just runs into something like that, especially if you don't lose a core here, is Art Style dipping a little bit low, but Liquid. It feel up, starts turning around, having faith in this nature's attack. Yeah, gotta be careful, there is a chrono available for General. They got it too, with the Art Style on the back line, they should easily be able to get the kill on Fada until Matumba Man slows things down with a Song of Siren. Dendi, he has another bling up in five seconds, don't think they're gonna be oh, able Matumba to Man actually jump. quite low for this. They're gonna try and chase down Matumba Man, but here comes Mike Control, he's got the Vanguard too. They turn around onto Fada, he still has the exorcism, another spirit siphon as well. General is not getting lucky with the back end until that said. He gets called up. Oh no! He ends up going down the call out. Oh, Denny in the back line. He takes out two. A top of man, just a sliver of HP. Running away from Seneko, but now Seneko really good. Good. Seneko got it! Dives into the tier two, successfully killing the core. He trades his way, his own life, but even with the track kill, it may be worth it for Navi. Barely finds that angle is. Because of the track, it does go in favor of Liquid, but still Navi. Not exactly how they wanted that to go, especially with Diddy Aran not able to do enough damage to support the other two cores, but Dendi did make it worth his while going for that aggressive blink in. But now this axe has picked up so many, so much farm and levels. 
I was just about to say, Mind Control, like, he's the big beneficiary of all this. He was in a fight that had track kills going down. You could see the way that, that Pivada in the front lines with that Spirit Siphon really thought he was going to be able to live until he gets bashed up right there. The call was beautiful, but then Dandy, he just lays waste, and this is why you have that Queen of Pain for that quick burst damage. Eliminates two heroes almost instantly. Oh, Matumba Man just almost made it around that corner. Maybe if he ate his tree line up, but able to nab the kill is Navi. Still leading in kills. The gold is still going in their favor as well. But at the same time, the threat of a Radiance Naga Siren is always going to loom over their heads, and they want to continue to try to push the pace. Yeah, we haven't actually talked about that too much. 2200 gold in the bank from Matumba Man. Bit of a loss after that team fight where he got picked by Seneko. But he will still have a lot of space, presumably, when Mind Control has his Blink Dagger in Vanguard. Nice and early. Pro's gonna walk by the Sentry Ward as General. Ready for it. So they know the wards placed behind the Tier 1, Tier 2 now. And, and they're gonna they run into this. So Seneko, he's got the dust. Got smoked up heroes though. They actually have Tichirati being into them. The Exorcism goes out. It's all about Fodder right now. Will he be able to survive through any burst damage incoming? That silence stopped any attempt by Na'Vi. No spells whatsoever from General or Dendi. And Fada gets the free Exorcism kill onto the Furion and will now use the rest of that Exorcism timing to go for the Tier 1 at top lane. Yeah, and this is a pretty natural transition for them as Liquid. They got lucky there as a people were trying to set up for it and fortunately DR Rod jumped the gun a little bit too early, immediately TP's in. Two heroes waiting for him. Fortune smiles on Liquid with that smoke. Run straight into the TP of the Furion. They won't be able to take the tier one at the top lane, though the Exodus is not lasting quite long enough. Now, Mind Control did just run into Art Style. Art Style. Knowing that the Axe doesn't have too much backup. Throwing those reading rainbows at him is Mind Control's gonna back up. Continue to farm his Blink Dagger. This is a very farmed Axe right now. Top in net worth. All heroes in the game so far. He may have the farm, but let's see how effective he is with it. These next few minutes are crucial for Liquid. Mind Control's got to get some successful initiations with that Blink Dagger, create the space, or even some successful team fights for Matumba Man to work around, whether it's farming creeps or heroes. Speed up that Radiance a little bit faster. He's got 3,300 gold. If that fight goes wrong, however, that Radiance starts getting delayed, Navi may find an opening to be able to take Roshan, and the Radiance tempo will clearly go Navi's they're actually going to go for Roshan now here, actually. They're going to try and sneak it in nice and early. This is a very good timing for them. Liquid are going to be caught totally off guard by this, unless Matumba Man can spot it out with one of these illusions. Still, I don't know if Liquid want to take this fight. The Exorcism available. They do have the Blink Dagger available on their axe, but with no farm on Matumba Man, this might actually just be a free Roshan. They're just going to up. They, they spot it out with the illusion. Doesn't matter. Mind Control Blink Score takes the next creep wave out, and they're going to claim the Tier 1 tower in exchange. Uh, and top lane, Vada almost brings down the Tier 1 tower there, but they're not going to have a TP in from General. Oh, instantly going to smoke in. They want to try to push this pace forward as Liquid. If they can get a free kill here, oh, be quite good for them. They're going to break their smoke, actually, to be able to take out that ward. That's will give a warning sign to Na'Vi to abandon this Tier 1 tower at top lane. So, two Tier 1s in exchange for Roshan. Blitz, are you favoring that trade-off for Liquid? It's what you can get out of this Aegis. And Liquid, if they overstay their welcome up at top, might just be worth it for Na'Vi, especially if they can find one of these core heroes. They don't want to keep running into Kuroki. They really want to grab this Axe or this Naga Siren, but unfortunately they're, uh, now the they're not even going to find him. Oh no, who's outside of the range of the smoke, or the dust rather? They are dropping everything on the ground. These Na'Vi heroes five up here. I mean, we just said it. Oh, this courier up at top two. Oh, no. Girl, there's no way you're that greedy. Sneaky little bugger. He gets it. Not only does he break the smoke, doesn't die from it, but he actually gets the courier pickoff. That couldn't have gone worse for Na'Vi. Thing is, Kuroki right now is playing this game where he doesn't really care about dying. He's just creating vision, creating chaos around the map. Na'Vi had to respawn five heroes up there. He breaks the smoke. A dust is popped on top of that. He grabs the courier. That was... Best case scenario for them, it adds a little bit of pocket change to Matama Man, who is rapidly closing in now on that Radiance. At one point, he was fifth in net worth on this team. Now he leads the entire game. Now that, that Radiance is only going to speed things along further, so time is ticking, Navi. You've caught this Furion, Queen of Pain, and Faces Void trio. 
We're looking to be able to push the pace of this game and establish dominance early. It's been quite yet happening. Yeah. Let's see if they can do it now at the 18 minute mark. Mind Control's gonna come forward. Has his blink dagger ready to go. Doesn't blink forward. It's a good thing too, Navi. Flying in wait, they've got Dendi backed up. Oh, now that the, the Radiance is completed, Matumba Man is going to make these pushes even slower. And Navi, they're still going to hit a really sick timing. They've got a Blink Dagger now on General available in 50 gold. Tag's almost completed onto the Queen of Pain and going to jump forward, but Fada's just going to go for the TP. Does manage to get himself away. A little bit scared that Centaur Conqueror was going to throw out a stun. I think Dendi was trying to grab the creeps over and force it so that four targets were on top and Liquid are just running Navi ragged. They didn't even take the tier two or the tier one power up at top. The Navi. We talked about how they had to continue to push the pace, especially with this Enchantress pick. Since the early game is concluded, they just haven't been able to do so. Dyer's bottom tower. Oh, art style. Repeatedly grabbing some Naga Siren illusions, but he's got to be careful here at the top lane. The track deal from Kuro just gets more information and backs himself away. Liquid. Not trying to make too much use of this blink dagger. As you were said before, they're just kind of like running around the map, uh, staying one step ahead of Navi if possible, and oh, just top. buying more and more time. The yeah, tempted if can, initiation. If they can just force Navi around the map repeatedly and force them to react to their moves and they just waste time, I think Liquid are going to be in a very good position going into the mid late game. And Navi, they're just getting frustrated across the board. They have this Aghanims completed on Dendi. No BKB or defensive items for him. He's going to all in rely on this Oracle. This Nature's Prophet is not the damage dealer that you need. Squid. Mind Control threatening Navi back just purely with this presence. Vanguard and Blink ready to go. That is not the target that you want to initiate on if you're Navi. Dyer's 1,500 HP attack. on him. Almost got the Blade Mail completed. 11 wand charges. He again. Got to go for this top tower push, Radiant's and I don't think this is a tower push that attack. they can afford to give up on. Because if you look bottom at bottom, they could are just... Sailing across Radiant the map, they're dodging all the fights. Fortified. Yes, Navi are going to commit to this top tower. Bada, with its exorcism, will be able to take the uh, tower at the bottom Dyer's lane. And as a result, Mind Control is choosing not Radiant's to put himself in a position where he can attack. contest the top tower. He accepts Radiant's the trade-off, and this just means Dyer's more farm go to both teams. See if that's to the favor of Liquid as time goes on. Fauna is about to complete a BKB. That's a big team fight item alongside the Radiance. Liquid may be able to put pressure some towers of their own quite soon. The uh, full five men will have to see what they choose though. A lot more damage coming out of Navi, more farming and damage items. The Maelstrom onto General. Navi, they, they can't seem to find any openings, right? It just, there, there seems to be no no heroes really sticking out from Liquid that are going to get caught by Na'Vi so far. You're Na'Vi, how do you force that error then? I'm not sure because they're in the position right now where they wanted to use that Aegis, Na'Vi ran them around. And Liquid are only really showing support heroes on the map. Whenever Na'Vi shows two heroes on the map, then that's when Liquid sends one of their cores to push out. Now that Na'Vi have lost the Aegis, I think they're going to be a little bit reluctant to push, but during all this time, the Naga Siren is just simply going to outfarm all your heroes. Is there a possibility that Na'Vi, because they weren't able to get the kind of fights and takeoffs that they wanted to around the 15 minute mark, that they're able to extend this game to their favor? They've got two Maelstroms, they've got the Aghanims on the Queen of Pain, they've got some pretty good farming items on their cores. Is it possible for them to actually beat out this, uh, this Naga Siren? who presumably will farm up net worth much quicker. Yeah, definitely. And I think that's what they're going for right now, committing this Maelstrom to general instead of going for that standard Blink Dagger. I think they've accepted the fact that this game isn't going to go in their pace anymore, and they're trying to slow things down, allow their course to get farmed up. Is Kuro going to spot another hero here? Not again, but still the rest of these. Okay, they're going to run into my control. That's not the hero you wanted to run into, especially with that Blade Mail. They may still be able to kite him around and control. They get the Sprout out. My control pops the call for the extra armor. Queen of Pain, threatening that ultimate, but now Matumba Man gets sealed. Can he actually set this one up? No, they're just going to TP out. It already used the Silence out from Vada. Oh, Matumba Man, though, might actually get picked for this. He tries to actually dodge out that Shatter Strike. Will be able to get off the debuff, eating up his progress back to the Tier 2. Might just lead to a natural push, though, from Na'Vi. Well, this Naga Siren. Still have a rather large creep wave up near their Tier 2, so they're going to need the Furion to go back and push that one out. And all the meanwhile, they're going to have Naga Siren illusions. 
hampering their progress. And this has got to be so frustrating for Navi. They desperately wanted to take that top fight. It looked like it was going to be a gift to them as Mind Control was caught out by that sprout, unable to do anything. So at a certain point, right, we see Navi, they're picking up these farming items. General, okay, there's the Chronosphere. Jerex, is no way he's getting it. At this point, General's saying to himself, any hero at this point. Yeah, when was the last time we saw a Chronosphere? You know, yeah. it was just, might as well use it, might as well put it on cooldown because Liquid's dodging us so hard. I think for Navi though, they're still okay, like you talked about. There is a point in the game where I feel like things can swing back to them. Right. It's because they have almost this four core lineup as art style is very farmed. He's got a Dragon Lance and an Aghanim Scepter. He can be very useful against these BKB heroes. He can almost always just keep turning those Naga Siren illusions to his favor. So there might actually be a point where Navi comes all the way back around, where the four core kind of works out for them. In which case, we then have to talk about Liquid. When, when do they, they... They are obviously the ones who are going to be looking to control the mid game. That's going to be their big peak when the Naga Siren has, you know, four items. What what sort of uh, situations are we looking at? When does Liquid actually start trying to pressure tier twos and thinking about ending the game? I think Navi, at some point, they're waiting for Navi to get frustrated. Maybe if they try to take another objective. Because I think Liquid is right now just operating under the assumption that Navi is trying to force something. Dyer's There's going to be a point where Navi attack. gets a little bit too hasty. They don't plan out their fight like they have been. Now it looks like Liquid. They just want to take this fight. Tama Man going to heal up. He's got the boots of travel though to meet the rest of his team. And I think Liquid right now are worried about the possibility of a Roshan. He further confirms Matama Man going to TP top though. This might just be a 5 on 5 fight as Na'Vi, they're here in full force. It's good game, real nasty, real quickly. They do have General on the side with a fresh blink dagger and they've already managed to pick off Curl. They can get more here, especially a core. This would be huge for them. Blink forward. You get a back. Oh, first hit bash for General. Just in time, Fada goes out the Spirit Siphon. But here comes that burst damage. He doesn't have the opportunity to get away from that one. Jerex with the TP out. Blink forward. Oh, oh the Spirit misses. Missing. General Fadi was going to get a third hero from Liquid. Not the case here. A big team fight ultimate wasted. They still have 40 seconds where the Death Prophet is dead. But they can't actually go for Roshan just yet. It's not even up. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know what that bash was. That's going to be something that tilts you if you're Fada. Because his TP, there was not going to be a second hit available, but instead, the very first hit. 7 to 12. General. 25 minutes in, a thousand gold lead for Liquid. Bit of an experience lead for Na'Vi though. Quite the even matchup so far. Yeah, that's generally going to happen when you have a Naga Siren on your team, even though she's going to get a lot of net worth. She's going to be pushing in lanes, not really giving her team or herself even experience. Still though, it seems like uh, the supports, perhaps just because the track gold, they've managed to get some decent progression in items. Jerex, for example, does have that ether lens. Kuro, not so much though. Still doesn't have the mech, which is obviously going to be essential to help keep Fada alive. He's already got the Yule Scepter BKB, but he needs every little bit of help he oh, can get. Maybe Dendi blinks for this. He's thinking about it. So they're setting up a trap for this. Instead, not going to go to anyone as Kuro just walks by it. Very late Roshan. It is just about to spawn. Both teams know it too, which is why Liquid are going to go for a four-man smoke here. See if they can actually get the initiation first on Na'Vi, get the numbers advantage, and guarantee an Aegis for themselves. Yeah, but I think Na'Vi are under some assumption that Liquid could just be backing up this Man Naga Siren. And now they're pinging like crazy. It looks like they do want to get into a fight. General has the Chronosphere in two seconds. This is going to be dangerous. Word plays down by Sineko. It's going to be a huge fight. They're going to make the jump, but General gets the blink. Quick reactions there from General. Now he has the opportunity to respond. He's going to time walk forward. Double Chronosphere. The rest of the team blinking forward. Dendi, no! Couldn't get off the Sonic Wave in time, but Tumble Man puts everything to a halt with the Song of Siren. Now Mind Control, he's going to go straight for Sineko. Wants to be able to take out that support first, but he gets off the ultimate. Dendi, silence up, BKB activated by Fauna. The Exit and Will manage to finish off with the Calling Blade. Curl will be taken out by Art Style, it looks like, but Art Style surrounded by a sea of liquid heroes. And on the right hand side, it looks like, oh, the ultimate comes out from 
extend. He, he managed to at least pick up a support there, but Mind Control still managed to claim a counter kill and Liquid win the fight with an exorcism still out on top of a tier two tower. And they win it handily because they forced Denny to go for the buyback. He is so far away now from this BKB and they need it for him. He needs to be able to get in there, get all of his abilities off, but instead, without that BKB available, a lot of silence just ripped through him. Dyer's bottom tower has fallen. Dangerous. General's initiation, they've really got to be on point here because if you look at Liquid's lineup, they've got both the Shadow Demon as well as the Naga Siren. Both are excellent counters to the Chronosphere setup. Yeah. As we saw with that Song of Siren halting every bit of progress there from Na'Vi. And for Na'Vi, if that fight went well, they could have immediately just transitioned that into some momentum, grab the Roshan for themselves, start to knock down some of these tier 2 towers, but instead, Liquid just reset the pace of the game. The worst possible thing again is Dendi's item timings have just completely fallen off as he is desperate, trying to get some measure of farm as art style in this mid lane. Track on him. Shuriken will bounce over as well. The man's running forward. Hope to be able to get off the ensnare. Now my control actually forced that through. And get the call on two. Calling blade one. Couldn't get the other for the move. They know that DR Rod's up there. They spot him out. One second there with a the shadow poison, but no disables to be able to stop him now, General. Oh, you gotta be careful. Not afford to get picked off here. He's gonna be silent up almost immediately. Won't be able to get a blink or a time walkout. My control with a double kill and another tier two tower gonna be forfeited by Navi. And Navi's just getting sloppy right now. Pressure starting to mount. Now it's clutch time for them as they cannot afford to lose another fight as Liquid is just taking too much real estate around the map. Dendi reluctant to fight though without that BKB or the buyback available and this is going to lead to Liquid just continuing to push in. Navi. Now it comes back, but where's the fight for them? Dendi with that Ags, oh no, oh, he, he got way too far forward. Now he's going to be ensnared up, silenced as well. There's no buyback available! Of course, that counter! Mind Control comes forward, gets the Culling Blade once again, and Ditcher Raw left with nothing but right clicks. Cannot keep Liquid off of this tier 3 tower. With 15 more seconds still, still General is up with the Chronosphere. Navi cannot afford to lose any more individual heroes, especially not Force. And here comes Artstyle. Oh, Artstyle thought he was going to be able to get a bit more damage on the bottom, but he said they couldn't afford another pick off, and it just happened. Liquid starts streaming forward, chasing Dichira back. The Exorcism beating onto the melee racks. It's just before the 30 minute marker, but now the Chronosphere comes in with the buyback. They need to be able to pop on it. They can't quite do it. The Exorcism about to fade. He's going to TP out. Everybody from Liquid going to make the clean escape here. Oh. Not be desperate to try to pursue. They use buybacks for this. But instead, they're going to be able to save the racks, but at the cost of so many different heroes and Na'Vi. They have to get Roshan now. They bought back earlier on Dendi. They just bought back on Art Style. They almost lost their melee racks. Didn't get any hero kills on Liquid. They have to get something. This is an all-in attempt by them. They can't afford to die or lose this Aegis themselves as Liquid are going to start marching forward. There is no Naga Siren available for Liquid, so this might be a decent fight for Navi, and this might be the best one they find, as they do have that Chrono, and it's all, it's gonna be all about the angles. They have to full commit right now, because there's 10 more seconds until the Song of Siren is back up. But Tumba Man no is here, though. with the Illusion, though, and now the Initiation. Mind Control managing to get the call out on Art Style. They surround him, good old from Dendi from the side, but it's just not quite enough. It's not putting a big enough dent in these cores, as Liquid are just pushing through on the right-hand side. Navi getting quickly surrounded. Stitcher Raw also gonna go down, and Navi splinter apart, leaving Roshan now in the hands of Liquid. And every single time that Navi is getting kills in this engagement, it's almost always on these two supports. They just haven't been able to nab a core Mind kill. Control's gunning for it, man. He sees it with the track. He's going to be able to get the call. He still has a follow-up after as well, setting up Fada now for the silence. On the double, on the double. General not going to be able to stop this. They can actually turn on the general. He still has the track on him. A couple more seconds to Radiance, putting a stop to that blink dagger, but he does get the time walk now. And Na'Vi, where's your hold? There's no Chronosphere available for General, no heroes available either. This is going to be a two-pronged attack from Liquid. Na'Vi might just be seeing the last game of TI here. Mid lane of Rax going to be demolished by Liquid. Picking up the pace of this game, striking hard in the mid game. They don't seem to show any signs of letting go. In fact, they're going to go for a second lane of Rax. Not Na'Vi. the Exorcism in four seconds. Navi, this is probably going to be your last chance to hold, and they're going to need a miracle for this one. If they can hold, though, Roshan is still available to them. 
the Octarine on the Naga Siren, though. This is getting nastier by the second. Navi, just no progression in the items after those buybacks. Especially on this Dendi Queen of Pain. We talked about it earlier. After that buyback at bottom, that disastrous fight, he is still trying to grab his BKB. Just unable to do so off of the back of so many unsuccessful team fights. Particularly with this Aghanim still, to really expect a lot more farm out of this Queen of Pain being able to spam out that ultimate, but not the case here. Probably get one more look at a team fight. Come on, sprites! In which case, they need to be the ones to be the tempo. General managed to get the time walk away from Michael. Might be the opening they need. Bouncing a lot of damage back. Art style in the middle of this, and Echo is gonna be the first one down though. Fata managed to get the silence on him. Yule Scepter on a general, stalling out the Chronosphere as best as possible. Now disruption as well. Fata, BKB, not the fight. Now the Chronosphere comes in. They will eliminate Fata, but my control gets the calling blade chop. A tumble man right in the middle of Navi's face, looking for more. My control finds it. Will be able to provide the assist with the blade mail. Another dunk. Liquid take out three of Navi and back out of Navi's base. And it looks like they want to transition this into a bottom tower push as Fada commits the buyback. They smell blood. They know that Navi just simply do not have the items to contest them. They're going to start flooding into this bottom tower and they want a second lane of Rax. They can end it all here. 40 seconds left on Dendi. But this is simultaneously an opening if somehow Navi gets a, a miracle pull against Liquid and can kill Fada at secondary time, but as I say that, DJ they cannot not afford to hero like this. On again, one after another. Mind Control finding the pickoffs is beyond godlike right now. And Navi have no hope in being able to save this second lane of Rax. 15 more seconds until Denny's up. Another 45 until Tichiraz Furion's alive. I think Navi, they have to learn their lessons. Give up this set of Rax, reset the fight, and at least try to find around that top lane of Rax instead of just suiciding. Hero after hero, and it looks like they're gonna do just that. But without five available, I don't think Navi want to take this. And Liquid are gonna leave pretty satisfied with two Navi's sets of racks now taken He's at just 30 minutes. Navi at this point living on one hell of a prayer. It's gonna have to come down into uh, the defense at top lane. Liquid trying to end this, getting mega creeps, taking out the last lane of racks, or it's gonna come down to the Roshan fight. See which one Liquid choose, as it does seem to be to them choose the battlefield. It looked like there were going to be salvageable moments for Navi, but unfortunately, every time they lost one hero, they were caught a little bit out of position. Mind Control instantly pounced every single time. He's got three different ways to set up a fight. Navi have to respect this axe a lot more than they have in these fights. Look at Kuro. Once upon a time, we were talking about how he didn't have the mech quite yet for Fada. But now, he's got a dag in three. This is going to be potentially the last fight for Na'Vi. They can't afford to lose this one, and this is going to be the perfect target Entry for them to get. From behind, they're going to try and pop a Tumble Man as fast as possible, but disruption! Oh no, the save! And my Tumble Man is back out with half HP! Still has a Song of Siren. Aren't they going to be able to get this kill? There. Oh, they're just going to reset this fight. Auto with the BKB exits is him out, but Tumba Man will give himself some space. And Navi gonna have to dig themselves out of a hole here. Big Digi Ron trying to get some distance with the Hurricane Peg. Not gonna be the case. Dineko is gonna be able to survive for only a second extra. General, the only one to escape, but he too will fall as Navi call it. The end of the game and the end of their run here at TI comes down as you can see how excited Liquid are. Now they get to get to the best of threes where things aren't so random, but for Na'Vi, this is where it's going to all end. And a disappointing finish for them as they go home. They're losing just one game to Liquid. And Truly a team that was ramping up going into the international. People were talking about it. The, the Na'Vi magic, it was coming back, but... As they go into the international, they falter and will be one of our first teams out.